made up of a probation officer, parole, a provision parole officer, a public defender, prosecutor, uh, treaters, counselors, LADAC, uh, licensed and alcohol uh, counselors, and members from law enforcement, and of course myself. And it's a, uh, you plead into it. Uh, you plead into it, it's gonna be a, generally it's a felony level charge with some some suspended time, usually some substantial sub, uh, suspended time that uh, sort of is the carrot uh, to get them through the drug court program. Uh, usually it's 18 months to, to two years. If you can successfully get through it in 18 months, that's great, but often there's some setbacks that occur. And uh, what we target are, are, the Senator mentioned it, but it's high, individuals that are at high risk and high need. It means high risk to reoffend. They're gonna commit another crime to feed their addiction. And they're at high need. That means they need constant supervision, they need treatment, and they need to have someone always watching over and making sure they have no spare time. And that's what we try to accomplish in drug court. So um, we expect that there's gonna be some relapses among them uh, just because they are high risk, high need. We accept relapse if they're honest with us, if they're upfront with us, and we can work with them. When they lie, we can't because it's difficult. So what they, uh, they enter a program by which they are frequently and randomly drug tested. They are attending individual and group session counseling. They are going to be participating, participating in AA or NA or some similar uh, uh, group. They're gonna be meeting with me and the team once a week in the first phase of drug court. And we have swift and immediate sanctions for those that violate the terms. Like they show up late for a meeting, they uh, miss a meeting, they show up with a dirty urine, they're going to have swift sanctions imposed, whether it's a day of incarceration of three days or five or seven days. They may have to do community service. They may have to take other steps to, to sort of correct their behavior. But the key is, is that when they, if they graduate, we expect that they will, they're gonna be returning to society as a productive member, as opposed to being someone that was a drain on our society. We expect that they're gonna have gotten their GED, we're expecting that they've are going to have employment, they're going to be re reunited with their family, they're going to uh, hopefully uh, not be that. The Stratford's uh, numbers are, are pretty impressive. The recidivism rate in Stratford is uh, in the low 20% over a five year period. We call it, if you relapse or if you have a, if you reoffend a new crime, uh, that's uh, so 20% is recidivism rate in Stratford County. Naturally, it's 50 to 60%. So you can see that there's some, some savings.